Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So I welcome to this new lecture on uh, gaseous nitriding of iron based alloys. So in the last lecture we have discussed about the influence of different alloying elements which are added into the steel and how they influence the growth of iron nitride layers. So as one can see we have discussed about if we are carrying in this Leherer diagram, if we are carrying the nitriding experiments in this region of phase diagram. So that is where we have either gamma prime or epsilon iron nitride can develop. So we stayed below this temperature, this is a 592 about 592 degrees Celsius that is the eutectoid temperature of iron nitrogen system. That means we are not uh, allowing any austenite to nucleate in those treatments. So, we discussed in the overview lecture that carburizing is always uh, carried in the austenitic region because of the reasons that it can take up huge amount of carbon and that can lead to development of martensite when we quench it. However, there are also examples where nitriding can also be used in the austenitic state and that is what uh, I will be discussing in today's lecture. And in this case, uh, the model system which we will be discussing is about iron with 2 atomic percent manganese. So, this alloy is such that it remains ferritic at the nitriding conditions. So, now we look at the nitriding conditions at 650 degree Celsius and with a nitriding potential of 0 0.05. So, that will be <coughs> at this point here. So, we are just into the gamma region of the Leherer diagram. So, it is expected that we should allow the growth of austenite. So, as we one can see this, in this case we are taking the element which is manganese which is known to be an austenite stabilizer and we know that nitrogen is also austenite stabilizer. So, that means this uh, Leherer diagram is known to be uh, applicable truly only for pure iron but now being the manganese having a austenite stabilizing effect, so we expect this phase borders to be shifting towards lower nitriding potential. That means this point what we have chosen could be already into the gamma region when it comes to the iron manganese alloy. So now what kind of microstructure it will lead to the you know the development when we nitride such an alloy, it means we have a 2 percent manganese. What is shown in this slide is. Uh, this is a light optical micrograph and what you see here is the surface of the sample and what you are seeing is as a function of depth how the microstructure starts to develop. So, you can see that this is the deepest region that is the youngest part of the nitriding and you see some features growing along the ferrite grain boundaries. Yeah, one can see that there is some phase growing along the ferrite grain boundaries and as you move towards the surface that means as the nitriding continues as we move to the close to the surface that becomes the oldest part of the nitriding, you start to see that the features also start to develop within the ferrite grains and as you come even closer then this density within the grains increases and when you come to the surface you see that you have more or less a closed layer that means a fully one type of a phase and with some sort of a two phase region below that. So, one can say that you have a surface region, intermediate region and deepest region to distinguish these features. <coughs> now, as we have uh, started the experiments in such a way that we expect the growth of austenite and to see whether what kind of phases are present, what you see on this uh, right side is the electron backscatter diffraction phase map. So, this is a technique in which 
you should be we will be able to distinguish the phases based on their crystal structure. So, that is what actually allows us to distinguish the phases based on the crystal structure. So, I would not go into the details of the technique, but what you see in this picture is the different phases which have been discerned based on their crystal structure. You have the austenite that is what is uh, shown with this uh, green color and you have a martensite that is shown with this relatively dark red color and this bright red color belongs to the ferrite. So, now what you see here is in this region you have a austenite plus martensite microstructure and below that you have a ferrite plus austenite. Okay? So, such a kind of a region and along the grain boundaries what we are seeing in the deepest region in the light microscope that is actually the austenite growing along the ferrite matrix grain boundaries. <coughs> So, this microstructure is rather very different if we look at in the under identical conditions if we nitride the pure iron and then what we expect is as a function of depth in the microstructure a layer of nitrogen enriched austenite. With a very clear you know demarcation between a nitrided region and unnitrided core and this one this nitrogen enriched austenite upon quenching can partly become martensite ok. So, at the max what we expect is a martensite plus austenite layer at the surface. So, we do not see this kind of evolution of a duplex microstructure where the very fine austenite particles are growing within the ferrite matrix. So, now why such a microstructure evolves when we have uh, austenite stabilizing element. So, before we discuss that if we look at uh, what exactly is present at the surface region here we have a uh, EBSD phase map. So, here we are able to discern what is present at the surface. So, we know that it is austenite plus martensite and the same thing we can see also with the x-ray diffraction what is plotted is uh, the x-ray intensity as a function of the Bragg angle or a diffraction angle what you see is the presence of martensite and austenite and in principle one can calculate the lattice parameters of this austenite and martensite and then estimate actually what should be the uh, amount of nitrogen content. So, this uh, I will uh, give it as a tutorial uh, problem where we will be able to utilize the available data on how lattice parameter changes as a function of nitrogen content for austenite and martensite. And now, from this uh, measured data, one would be able to use that to get the details. So, now if we look at compositionally, actually, what is happening as a function of depth? So, what is shown in this slide is you see here is a this is a light optical micrograph, and what you see here is the surface of the sample, and we are seeing the cross section. So, that means we are going into the sample along this white dashed line, along which actually the composition measurement has been carried out and using a technique called electron probe micro analysis. So, again I will not go into the details of the technique, but what you see is you have a surface region which we have discerned in the previous micrographs where we have a more or less a homogeneous contrast. There you have a rather uh, homogeneous nitrogen content and in this intermediate region you see that there is a large fluctuations in the nitrogen content and in the deepest region you see that suppose for example, here you see the grain boundary uh, phase that is austenite and you see the enrichment of nitrogen there. And if you look more closely what is happening with the manganese content again in the surface region you see that manganese content is more or less homogeneous at the level expected based on the amount of manganese in the initial alloy. But later you see that wherever there is a manganese enrichment there is a nitrogen enrichment there is also a manganese enrichment. For example, if you look at this point or if you look at this point you see that there is a enrichment in both manganese and nitrogen and these enrichment regions coincide with the austenite uh, particles in the microstructure. So, that means what it shows is that initially you have a manganese which is homogeneously present in the ferrite matrix and as the nitrogen comes in. So, it tries to grow the uh, austenite 
by partitioning the manganese. So, it means uh, manganese and nitrogen enrichment has to happen simultaneously in order to nucleate the austenite. So, that is where you see that because in this process you always create a manganese depleted region around every austenite nuclei and that is where actually a new austenite cannot grow. So, it leaves some space and then a new austenite grain grows. So, this is the mechanism which makes the development of this kind of a duplex microstructure. So, now if you look in detail actually what we have seen in the uh, until now is only the macroscopic features, but now if you look into the detail with a high resolution uh, uh, sc scanning electron microscopy or transmission electron microscopy. So, here what is shown here is the these are the scanning electron micrographs. So, you see that there is a gamma regions and there is a ferrite region in which the gamma regions are growing and you see there are some very fine precipitates which are like a platelet kind of a features and that you can be seen more pronouncedly in this you know the deeper region. Yeah. So, this is a grain boundary gamma phase and within the ferrite grain which we have unable to see anything in the light micrograph, but you see that there are some precipitates and if you look closely in the transmission electron microscopy to characterize what is the crystal structure of these precipitates and then after analyzing what we can see is that there is a presence of manganese nitride MN4N that is developing in the ferrite matrix with some crystallographic orientation relationship with the matrix. So, that we will not go into the details, but only you can see that now this in this bright field image it is a TEM bright field image you have these MN4N precipitate platelets and what this arrow indicates is along the normal to this arrow you have the 1 over planes of your BCC ferrite matrix along which your nitride MN4N platelets are growing. So, with this we will be able to conclude that you have a as a uh, nitriding process runs initially you start to develop manganese nitrides in the ferrite matrix and followed by the growth of austenite. <coughs> now, can we understand this development from the equilibrium thermodynamics because these systems are rather simple as compared to the commercial steels. So, here we have a ternary system you have a binary iron manganese alloy and in which you start to add nitrogen into it that means you are developing a ternary alloy. So, what is shown in this slide is it is a iron manganese nitrogen phase diagram at 650 degrees Celsius and 1 atmospheric pressure. So, I will not go into the details of the phase diagrams at this stage, but I will definitely put one uh, tutorial where you will be able to understand how to read the compositions in a ternary phase diagram. But what you see here is you have a iron and manganese binary on this side and you have a iron and nitrogen binary on this side and here you have a manganese and nitrogen binary. So, here you do not go up to the 100 percent uh, manganese or nitrogen it is only portion of the iron manganese nitrogen phase diagram. So, as we see that we start with an alloy having about 2 weight percent 2 atomic percent of manganese that is the initial alloy and you start to add nitrogen into that and then the alloy composition goes through this red dashed arrow ok. As you increase the nitrogen content this is how actually we travel in this composition space. So, now what we can extract the information from this is what kind of equilibrium products are expected to develop as the nitrogen content increases. So, one can see that initially it should it should form a ferrite matrix with one kind of a manganese nitride and as you cross further the nitrogen content then it is expected to nucleate the gamma phase ok the ferrite with the austenite and this nitrides and if we go further we expect to see alpha plus gamma phase and then if you go further you form a fully austenitic phase. So, how we can discern these uh, things in the actual microstructure is the base manganese content would be the deepest region in the microstructure. So, what you see here is in the microstructure. So, this is the deepest region somewhere in the deepest region you will have no nitrogen that means that is where we are having the 
only the base material and now as you add the nitrogen content we are traveling up here. So, the nitrogen content goes up and now you come to the surface in this way. Now, we can see that in the deepest region we have a ferrite with manganese nitride. So, and then you start to see the development of this uh, intermediate region where you have a austenite, ferrite and having manganese nitrides in the ferrite matrix and then as you come closer to the surface you start to see that you have a closed layer of austenite that means it is a fully nitrogen austenite which develops and then you, what we are seeing as a martensite is that is coming because after the nitriding treatment these samples have been quenched into water. So, that is how actually one can see that you have a portion of the austenite as transformed to martensite. So, this way we are able to generate the martensite austenite, ferrite austenite such actually dual and duplex phase regions as a function of depth in the sample. So, now actually this illustrates that by using the thermodynamic information that means by looking at the phase diagrams of the you know the materials which we are actually doing the nitriding and by understanding what kind of phases are expected as we increase the nitrogen content we will be able to at least have a first uh, prediction on what kind of phases can develop. So, with that one would be able to actually design the chemistry of the base material in such a way that you can generate a unique microstructure. In this case having the manganese content which is actually having a small amount of manganese and if you go into this three phase field if you look here what is given here is the composition of austenite and ferrite. One can see that there is a enrichment of manganese in the austenite and nitrogen and a depletion of manganese in the ferrite matrix. So, such a equilibrium situation certainly demands that you have a isolated nucleation and growth of manganese particles uh, so austenite particles in the ferrite matrix. The reason being you have a ferrite matrix and now if you grow the austenite as expected from this equilibrium then actually you create a manganese depleted region around it. So, you will have a region where manganese is depleted that is where you cannot have further growth of this austenite or the new nucleation of the austenite and then you have an another place where austenite can nucleate. So, this is the mechanism which makes the development of you the uh, uh, growth of austenite particles within the ferrite matrix otherwise it has no reason to grow in this fashion. So, that is the difference with respect to a pure iron where it is only stabilizing the austenite based on the nitrogen content. So, in case of a pure iron as the nitrogen enters, so it will simply try to grow the austenite layer and this will continue to grow with time. So, you will not see the austenite growing at a deeper region within the ferrite matrix. So, that will not be uh, you know, possible to see. So, now actually if it comes to the technological uh, implications of such a alloy design and carrying the experiments. This kind of microstructures having a finely dispersed austenite in a ferrite or a martensite matrix is known to have a unique combination of properties. So, it will be able to offer a unique combination of strength and duct ductility. So, and even these uh, uh, austenite particles upon deformation can transform to martensite and can lead give rise to so called transformation induced plasticity. So, this way a, a rather simple chemistry uh, can create a very unique microstructures that can be having a very useful mechanical properties. So, with this uh, I am at the end of this lecture. So, what we have discussed is about if we have a situation where we are conditions are such that we are able to grow the austenite then what kind of alloy chemistry one can have in the base steel that can actually will dictate actually the kind of phases which can evolve with time. So, now by designing this chemistry and the nitriding conditions that means the temperature and the nitriding potential and the base steel chemistry this all together have to be optimized in order to generate uh, useful microstructures. 
So, with this I am at the end of this lecture and then in the next lecture we will discuss about the classical application of nitriding where it has been used only to produce the finely dispersed alloying element nitride particles in the ferrite matrix. Until now what we have seen is when the iron nitrides tries to grow or austenite tries to grow how these elements will influence. In the absence of any other iron nitrogen phases growing, so how these alloying elements interact with the inwardly diffusing nitrogen and lead to the development of nitride particles that we will discuss in the next lecture. Thank you.